And that was a great play. What people don't realize, that was a great play by Malcolm on that yes. scene. On Curse, when Curse made that weird back catch. And then Malcolm Butler hit it out of his hands. No, he hit well, it. What happened? It, you, yeah. got pit, you got it. Oh, is this a Javon's Curse yeah. catch? Oh, Malcolm Butler did make a heck right of a play. Let's see it. Oh, oh that's the fight. <laughs> uh, where is it? Oh, it's the bottom. Oh, line. yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, that, that, Malcolm Malcolm Butler couldn't do anything more. I remember it now. That was a spectacular catch. I'm refreshed catch. now. Spectacular catch. No I mean, doubt about it. But like that was a spectacular coverage. It was. You can't do anything about it. I mean, Malcolm Butler Hits covered that him. ball. He then, did what he needed to do. And it was crazy to see Malcolm come in and, and have the mental toughness because I mean, I think we I think we went away from Air, Arrington. Arrington was starting that game, and Butler, you know, Arrington gave up some plays and and, and Malcolm they put Malcolm in there after he made a play on a seam because we were getting eaten by those seams. Remember that? Yes. And then Malcolm came in. He was making plays left and right. He was like a little, like a little, little spark, little spark, little yes. puppy dog out there. And and you know, after I saw this, I'm sitting here like, man, that's gonna suck for this. Is, this sucks, man. That was a great ass play by Malcolm. And, and I'm not gonna lie. At this point, I'm sitting there. I'm trying to do math in my head. I'm sitting here like, how much time we're going to get the ball? What plays do we have in our menu? Are they going to score right away? Are they going yeah. to go back out on the field? What Was, type of plays are we going to run? What do I got to be ready for? Two minute, yeah, fast pace offense. How many timeouts do we have? I was preparing. That's what we were doing. We were, we were just mentally programmed like that to be just ready for the final drive as well if they scored. Thankfully, Thankfully. Hightower makes a great tackle on That Marshawn. tackle. Oh, That's Tower. a game-saving tackle. People game don't realize saving. that. Nope. High Tower is absolute monster. You on don't the, was it a first tower. down or Jeez. second down? That was on first. And then second down, the the interception heard around the world, if you will. Malcolm makes another heck of a play, the greatest play in maybe Super Bowl history of his career. That was, I mean, that was so crazy. But I, I remember vividly once they got in that formation, that week of practice, we practiced, our defense was practicing that play four or five times, and Josh Boy scored every single time on it. And I'm sitting there because in, in, in Super Bowl practice where you're chilling before your next period where you sit down, you hone in, you want to see what the defense is doing, how they're, how they're practicing because, you know, you, you want to see what we're going into. And I remember – do you remember watching this play with Josh yeah, Boyce? I do. Mm -hmm. Fucking lighten us up four or five times. And I remember them like, yeah, got to get physical. Browner did just that, thankfully. And Malcolm Butler came through. I remember Malcolm in practice was sitting back more. Mm -hmm. You know, he wasn't being aggressive. And then what happened? That play was calling the game, and Malcolm Butler was super aggressive and made the play that he needed to make. It wasn't happening without the uh, the preparation in practice the week before. So, Ernie, Pick. well, hold on. We can't we oh, can't move, we can't move on from this play nothing. yet. This okay. in interception, Malcolm Butler. So I know a lot of like the public discourse about this is that this was the stupidest thing in the world. Dumb play call. Should just give it to Marshawn Lynch. Um, do you guys agree with that? Or is there... Cause I, well, there's I, the whole timeout situation yeah. where, where Bill didn't take the timeout because he saw the personnel The clock was group. running. Personnel group was in there. I mean, it's, it's tough, man. We had like all... We had, I think we had... We had like 14 personnel where it's all big boys in like two corners. Who was in? I think there was three. Three. We have and safety. Line. So you want to throw the first out personnel. So the thing I mean, that's what right? technically, that, you, technically do. you want to. Yes. So so I'm a huge Pats fan, so I'm not going to like stand on the soapbox for the Seahawks. I just hate that the discourse is like, it's so dumb. You should have given it to Marshall Lynch because when you really like dive into this play, it's a lot more like nuance and there's a lot more like chess happening between – Pete Carroll and the Seahawks and what with the Patriots and the Belichick and not just like in this moment, but as you mentioned, chess moves happening in preparation where you knew this play was a thing here. And I think that like it does this play a disservice and it does the Seahawks a disservice to just say, oh, you should just ran it with Marshawn because Marshawn Lynch only had five carries inside the one yard line this year. Only one scored a touchdown. So he wasn't like an automatic goal line back. He's not Mike Allstott. Also, situationally, um, the clock was running. Belichick decided not to call a timeout, even though I'm back at my house yelling, call a timeout, like that kind of, you know, you don't know the shit, right? And so it puts them in the situation where the clock is running, there's one timeout, there's three more downs left. If you run at that play and you miss, you have to call a timeout, and now your next two plays are kind of, you kind of have to pass it, or you really kind of put yourself into a box. And, and I think that just, this play deserves more nuance, and Pete Carroll's not an idiot, and like, 
I don't know. That's my that's my soapbox of it all. That yeah, this play I mean, is more than just run it. And it without so a doubt. Dumb. I mean, that's just people that don't know football saying that. I like it. That's the best dissection I've ever heard of that play. And, and I, I mean, I just fucking love football because you can just dissect this one play and like, there's just so much layers on it. I just hate that this is just like the discourse is just like, oh, just run it, Marshall Lynch. I digress. I'll get off my soapbox. This is kind of like... I love football. You hit it right on the money, brother. It's kind of like a cronut. You got a bunch of layers of just little beautifulness <laughs> glazed up into one. You take that hole out. You dip it into a little coffee. You take a bite of it. And that's just play. That's right. And <laughs> I have so many notes on this, but like also Pete Carroll had Browner on his roster the year before. He should know that he has the ability to blow up this play, right? So if you want, like maybe the play call was wrong, right? But like the idea to pass, it just, he didn't check that last Belichick move to like make this the play that wins. The they hit this play like yeah. five times though in the year. That's what people don't realize. Yeah. You know, there's an old saying, you are what you are. You do what you do. You hear those types of things about teams, and that's what this team was. It was a do-what-they-do type of team, confident in their process, confident in what they do. They're not changing for you. They're confident in their execution, and you change for them. Wise, and Malcolm Butler wise. may have changed that whole goddamn thing. Now, where does this interception Malcolm's interception rank among greatest Super Bowl plays of all I time. Mean, it's got to be up there. It's got to be pro at I least mean, top three. It could That's be top, minimum, top one. Three. It's probably number one. Number one in my book. It's got to be number one. I mean, it was to win the game. It was number one. Number one. Number one. Hands down.